T-Tube. News today. Welcome to watch our programs and thank you for subscribing. And want you to say congratulations for reaching the minimum limit of subscribes. Now, we are requesting you to watch, share, comment and or like our videos. News headlines. Advocates warn of environmental destruction in Ethiopia's Tigray. Ethiopia rejects Tigray rebel claim of pullout from a far region, Friday, April 29, 2022, Mail Online. Tigray in Ethiopia was an environmental success story, but the war is undoing decades of regreening published, by The Conversation April 27. This is a part of the genocide. Danger aus religors conflict in Ethiopia, is sweeping innocent lives, fatherly call for peace, so many Muslims have massacred in Gonda Amhara by the terrorist Fano and following this so many Christians have massacred in South Nations nationalities and people's regional state because of their regilon. Abba Matthias I, Orthodox Patriarch of Ethiopia, Archbishop of Ethiopia he expressed sorrow over the loss of life and property in the Silta zone of the southern nations, nationalities and peoples region. He also called for paternal peace. In their message, only the devil, who is the celestial being, will survive the Holocaust. I strongly urge you to be God-fearing as we walk, for it is impossible to put out the fire. I urge all of us to stand for peace, as this conflict and massacre will not be a name or a history other than the record of moral depravity, the epitome of sin. While there are many people in northern, eastern, western, and southern Ethiopia who need our support, it is a completely condemned tax to plunge another country into another crisis. I am deeply saddened by the loss of loved ones. I declare that this practice is not appropriate because the church is not a tribute to fire, but a refuge for the soul of thanksgiving. We are also destroying the country by fighting each other. We need a country to be reconciled and we have to cultivate our country. Let's all stand up for peace. I also urge the government to expedite the task entrusted to it by God and man, and to encourage the clergy to continue their efforts to build a new generation. The butcher Abiy Ahmed is now creating so many conflicts all over the country. Ethiopian Council of Religious Institutions, also added it was illegal to try to correct another crime. This face council have been solent when Tigrayans are mercilessly massacred because of their identity for two years long genocide. The conference stated that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church and Protestant denominations have committed illegal and criminal acts in the town of Werribee in the Silta zone of the Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples region. He strongly condemned the crime. The council said the act was unacceptable to any religion and strongly believed it was a serious crime and should be prosecuted. Details attached, fatherly call for peace, Abba Matthias I, Patriarch of Ethiopia, Archbishop of Ethiopia he expressed sorrow over the loss of life and property in the Silta zone of the southern nations, nationalities and peoples region. He also called for paternal peace. In their message, only the devil, who is the celestial being, will survive the Holocaust. I strongly urge you to be God-fearing as we walk, for it is impossible to put out the fire. I urge all of us to stand for peace, as this conflict and massacre will not be a name or a history other than the record of moral depravity, the epitome of sin. While there are many people in northern, eastern, western, and southern Ethiopia who need our support, it is a completely condemned tax to plunge another country into another crisis. I am deeply saddened by the loss of loved ones. I declare that this practice is not appropriate because the church is not a tribute to fire, but a refuge for the soul of thanksgiving. We are also destroying the country by fighting each other. 
we need a country to be reconciled and we have to cultivate our country. Let's all stand up for peace. I also urge the government to expedite the task entrusted to it by God and man, and to encourage the clergy to continue their efforts to build a new generation. Quote. Advocates warn of environmental destruction in Ethiopia's Tigray, April 27, 2022 VOA, Kombalicha, Ethiopia. A British environmental group warns the war in Ethiopia's Tigray region is driving deforestation. It says blockades limiting fuel and aid to the region have forced Tigrayans to chop down trees, worsening food shortages in a region the UN says is already at risk of famine. Tigray has been under a de facto humanitarian blockade for more than nine months now, with Ethiopian government forces and rebels accusing each other of preventing aid from reaching the war-torn region. The UN says one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world is taking place inside Tigray, with an acute lack of food. Ordinary Tigrayans are said to be desperate to find resources for day-to-day -day living. A report by the UK-based non-profit group The Conflict and Environment Observatory says the war and lack of aid in Tigray is having a serious impact on the environment that could cause problems for Tigrayans for decades. By analyzing satellite images in Tigray, the report concludes conflict-driven deforestation is happening at an alarming rate. Trees play a major role in conserving soil and water to produce food. Aid agencies have warned that parts of Tigray are already close to famine. Henrique Schulte, the author of the report and a conservation scientist at the Zoological Society of London, said conflict-driven deforestation usually happens for two reasons. One is the breakdown of environmental governance, she said. For instance, if in a war zone, protected areas are no longer protected and people can move in and remove vegetation, deforestation can also occur because of increased demand for foreign resources. Rafael Edu, the Africa Program Manager at the Environmental Investigation Agency, a Washington-based non-profit group, said rebel groups in Africa frequently turn to logging as a source of funding. Conflicts and deforestation represent one of the great threats to social development in Africa, he said. Illegal logging is one of the ways to get quickly, money. As the forest has become the source for rebels to buy weapons. They always cut the trees from the forest, Edu added that anywhere there is a conflict, very high rates of deforestation emerge too. In recent years there has been a successful effort to rebuild forests in Tigray to assist development and the economy, as well as food security. The report says the effort is now facing a setback. However, the people in Tigray may be more concerned about survival in the short term. The UN says 9.4 million people in the north of Ethiopia, including Tigray and parts of the neighboring Afar and Amhara regions, require humanitarian aid. Schulte said that the best way to stop the deforestation is to stop the conflict, but even then, the environmental damage will take decades to undo. Tigray in Ethiopia was an environmental success story, but the war is undoing decades of regreening April 27, 2022 by the conversation. An ongoing war between the Ethiopian government and its allies against Tigray, one of its northern states, has led to one of the world's biggest humanitarian crises. 
We have used satellite data to track how the conflict and resulting energy crisis has also broken the relationship between humans and nature. People have been forced to use firewood, causing a loss of vegetation in a region on the forefront of environmental rehabilitation. That's the key finding of our new report published by the Conflict and Environment Observatory. Tigray is semi-arid, and people there, like most of Ethiopia's population, depend on subsistence agriculture fed by rainfall for a large part of the diet. When cropping is disrupted by insufficient rainfall or other causes, alternative sources of income or food are also often insufficient, contributing to catastrophic famines, such as in the 1980s. Conventional agricultural development policies, such as farmers' access to fertilizers, loans, or markets, have only had modest effects on productivity. In the 1990s, the Tigray government instead adopted a conservation-based policy to address persistent food insecurity and low agricultural productivity. The new strategy focused on making the land better at retaining water and soil, two key ingredients of agricultural production. This meant building stone and soil berms, raised barriers, that slowed down overland water flows, reducing erosion rates. It also meant creating ponds in which runoff water could be stored. And it involved banning livestock grazing and wood cutting in patches of degraded land so it could regenerate. These exclosures act like sponges, allowing rainwater to infiltrate the soil rather than running off. Over three decades, this approach transformed the Tigrayan landscape, leading to widespread recovery of trees and shrubs, reduced erosion and rising groundwater tables. This allowed the expansion of irrigated agriculture and, most importantly, agricultural yields indeed increased. Terraces, which slow down the flow of water and trap soil, are visible on these mountain slopes. Over the past few decades, people across Tigray have worked, sometimes in exchange for food or money, but often unpaid, to create such soil and water conservation structures, transforming the landscape and making it more productive. Why war is bad news for trees however, this success has now come under threat from the war which began in November 2020. Since then, the region has been under a blockade, leading to a collapse in food and fuel supplies. Electricity has been disrupted and unreliable, and banking and telecommunication services have been suspended. This has created a huge humanitarian crisis, 1.8 million people have been displaced far away from their homes, and 83% of people in Tigray are estimated to face acute food shortages. Cut off from alternative supplies for cooking fuel, people may have to turn to local sources of wood, despite regulations against cutting vegetation in exclosures. Contacts in Tigray shared with us their concerns about the pressures that the energy crisis is putting on trees and shrubs. And vegetation declines were indeed visible in the few open access, high resolution satellite images available on Google Earth taken after November 2020. However, it was difficult to gauge the extent of the problem as the region remains largely inaccessible. We therefore turn to open access data from the EU's Copernicus satellites, which provide regularly updated images of the whole of Tigray. We looked for areas where woody vegetation had declined since the start of the war, and found certain hotspots with a strong decrease in NDVI, a commonly used index for greenness of the landscape. Potential alternative drivers of these declines, rainfall, temperatures, fires and locust outbreaks, showed little overlap with these hotspots of woody vegetation decline. 
Woody vegetation continued to thrive in other places in Tigray during the same period, but, when compared to pre-conflict years, vegetation recovery was subdued. This led us to conclude that declines were likely being intensified by the conflict. The history of the Tigrayan landscape shows that losing woody vegetation cover leads to soil erosion and water runoff, decreasing agricultural productivity in a region already suffering from widespread hunger and expecting another drought this year. In the long term, pressures from climate change, including increasing downpours, which can contribute to erosion, and droughts, are likely to continue. Woody vegetation, a key soil and water conservation component, is thus being eroded at a time when it is crucial to the long-term well-being of people in Tigray. On a more positive note, previous landscape restoration efforts are providing a buffer for the environmental impact of the war, as losses of woody vegetation are likely occurring from a higher baseline than they would have previously, yet we still don't know what impact the war will have on the region's wildlife or water cycles. Neighboring regions such as Amhara and Afar, into which the conflict has spilled since July 2021, could also be affected. It is important that the environmental impacts of the war are fully assessed on the ground to inform recovery strategies. Only if the environment thrives can the long-term well-being of people in conflict-affected areas be assured. Ethiopia rejects Tigray rebel claim of pull-out from a far region, Friday, April 29, 2022, Mail Online. Ethiopia on Friday rejected as lies claims of withdrawal by Tigrayan rebels from a region neighboring war Rak Tigray and accused them of trying to impede the delivery of aid. Abiy Ahmed is denying and sweeping the people of Tigray. The conflict between Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government and the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF, erupted in November 2020. The TPLF on Tuesday said it withdrew from a far region under rebel occupation for nine months, fulfilling a key demand set by the government when it declared a humanitarian truce last month. The TPLF is trying to mislead the international community by pretending to have withdrawn from the entirety of a far region. Leges Tulu, Ethiopian government spokesman, told a press conference. Even though it has withdrawn from some border areas of Amhara and Afar regions, it has seized other geographically key areas, while it has continued to occupy other areas, Tulu said. Both sides' claims could not be independently verified. The international media echoed these lies without cross-checking facts, said Ethiopian Foreign Ministry spokesman, Dina Mufti, in a separate press conference, referring to the rebels' claims of total withdrawal from afar. The truth is that the TPLF forces have only withdrawn from a few areas of Erebti, Bearhale, and Abala town while maintaining control of the surrounding areas of Abala affecting the aid corridor, through which aid flows to Tigray, as well as other areas in Afar and Amhara, he said. The conflict began when Nobel Peace Laureate Abiy sent troops into Tigray to topple the TPLF, and commit genocide in collaboration with Asius Afverki the region's then ruling party, saying the move came in response to rebel attacks on army camps. It followed months of seething tensions between the government and the TPLF, which had changed the country from poverty to civilizing stage, settled politics in Ethiopia for three decades before Abiy came to power in 2018. Although the butcher denied and leveling the people for further genocide. Humanitarian aid, the war has driven hundreds of thousands to the brink of famine, displaced more than 2 million people and left more than 9 million in need of food aid, according to the United Nations. After quickly toppling the TPLF, 
the Federal Army was driven out of Tigray in June 2021 by the rebels, which then advanced into Afar and Amhara before retreating to Tigray in December. But rebels continued to occupy some areas of the two regions. In March, Ethiopia's government declared an indefinite humanitarian truce effective immediately, which allowed several convoys of humanitarian aid to reach the region for the first time since mid-December. The UN previously blamed both sides for the de facto humanitarian blockade. Leges called on the international community to continue its pressure to make the Tigray forces leave from all areas it controls in Afar and Amhara, accusing the rebels of working hard to impede aid efforts. Since April 1, 146 aid trucks have been able to enter Tigray, Mufti said, rejecting rebel claims that the government had limited the amount of aid supplied to the region. Humanitarian organizations must however obtain permission from Addis Ababa and the Afar region for each convoy. The UN World Food Programme this month said it was ready to keep supplies flowing in at scale after its latest convoy arrived in Tigray where 6 million people live. Civilian lives would not by any means be compromised to extend the butcher Abiy Ahmed's power. The international community should solve the problem in western Tigray to, ethnic cleansing being committed in western, northwestern, central and eaten Tigray. TPLF should make the face negotiation clear to its people. <laughs>